So the ShopRite business across its multiple stores over the last year had more than one robbery every single day. 486 incidents of violent armed robberies. Peter Engelbrecht, chief executive of ShopRite. Those 486 incidents all in South Africa or those spread across the African continent? We don't have that kind of uh, scenario in the rest of uh, Africa. It's this African problem. Uh, 489 to be 489, exact. I beg your pardon. Give me a typical example of what plays out in one of these robberies. And, and why, why I mentioned that and why, and, and, and uh, it's not something we like to talk about, I mean, but it's the reality. We've had a 34% increase in armed robberies in, over the last year. The issue around that is... And it's not one guy coming in with a balaclava 20 uh, with, a time, with a fake gun. 20 at a time, armed with an AK-47, storming a store, um, as I said to the Minister of Police at the time, Mr. Fakili, that... Um, he met you at this table, I think. Fakili and Balula came in here, sat at this table, correct. and you chatted about this. Yeah, and, 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 and um, uh, there's a lot of things that we shared with them. We shared data with them. There's certain hotspots, of course. But it's 20 armed people rushing into a store. How would your reaction be if it's your daughter sitting on my checkout? That's what you asked Fakili and Balula. Yeah. That's, that's how we're passionate about our people, and we worried about them and their safety. So that's the one thing. In, uh, in one of the incidents, unfortunately, um, they shot four of our customers um, in, in a store recently, about four weeks ago. The next day, you can understand, one staff member pitched up for work. And for three weeks, no customer pitched at that store. So if you take over a period of a year, all of these incidents, the impact that it has on the overall business, uh, um, if we just talk about the business, the safety is uh, another thing. Mm. Um, the impact on the business is enormous. The amount of, of, of sales and turnover that we lose is, is, is very big. And that affects our numbers, of course. But we don't want to use that as an excuse. Our concern is mostly around the safety of our customers and our staff. What is your sense of why there's been such a big increase? Are you particularly vulnerable as a business? Was everybody in your sector, you would swap notes with the CEOs yes. of, of Pick and Pay and, and Woolies, are, are you particularly vulnerable? We are more so because we are a very big payee of the government grants. So a lot of these activities happen around month end. And we've appealed to government uh, for the last seven years that we need to find a way to spread those payments over more days. But wouldn't you then just spread the incidence of crime across more no, days? No, because then we won't have such an enormous amount of cash at a certain okay. day or point in time. We could spread it over time. We always have money um, mm. uh, and pickups during the day and all that. But uh, the scenario now is we have to bring money in to be able to pay our, out, out to our customers. So but there are multiple levels of vulnerability there, the cash and transit guys bringing the cash in, the customers who are then in the store drawing the cash, and as they leave, they're vulnerable to, to more petty crime. Absolutely. But it's the large-scale stuff that is of a concern. How do you begin to combat that? Well, we've invested a lot of capital and you know, also consulted uh, globally. Um, and I'm uh, starting to feel like we're building our own little CIA here with uh, data. Um, that we feed into a central control room uh, where we can see exactly which of our assets are under threat and we can make centralized decisions around that. Is the crime stuff as predictive as the artificial intelligence within the business suggests what's going to happen with prices and with trends and with consumers and with demand? Is the crime stuff as predictable it's, using the data? It's starting to be because we've, we, the first thing is you have to get the data. So we started to collect the data and put it in a single repository, and now we're starting to use the algorithms to start tell us what's the likelihood. But you're doing this privately. So yeah. you're, you're funding this privately. Yes. You've got, I don't want to use the term private army, but effectively a private army, yeah. private intelligence services, privately running this thing because the state has been, what, unwilling, unable? Uh, what, what's the reason for not them not stepping up to the plate? What I can say is... The, probably one of the biggest deterrents still of that kind of crime is visible policing. Um, and there are some improvements that we can make in visible policing around uh, the scheduling of that, etc. So there are small things that we can do. I also want to say that there are some fantastic mm. police out there that do assist us. Uh, but it's, uh, it is uh, not on a national level. It's certain of the generals, certain of the uh, commissioners of excellent help to us. I must admit that.
But you don't have this problem in other parts of Africa. Some 20% of your business happens in Africa, outside of South Africa. South Africa naturally then would have a disproportionate impact on, or, or, you know, it will be impacted on disproportionately. But you don't have this sort of violent crime targeting outlets in, in other countries on this continent. I remember of only one incident in Botswana where there was an armed robbery in Francistown. Which is right close to the South African border and probably carried out by South Africa. But can I tell you that uh, before they reached the border, um, the helicopters of the army already intercepted them and they caught all of them. Mm. So not again. They, they didn't try again. How frustrating is it? I mean, d does it cause you to rethink expansion? Does it, re does it cause you to rethink growth? Does it cause you to... Does it challenge your idea of a growth business in South Africa? ShopRite traditionally grows outlets 120 to 150 a year. You employ three to 4,000 more people every single year. But against that backdrop, is it not demoralizing? It definitely doesn't impact uh, my view on expansion, etc. but it's emotionally very draining. It's not a pleasant thing to be in my position signing letters of condolences to parents, to brothers. And that's my problem the safety of our customers and our staff. Peter Engelbrecht, Chief Executive of ShopRite. On to more pleasant things in a moment, understanding the science of retail and why it is that if you still get a daily or a weekly newspaper, at the end of the month you open your newspaper and 90% of it is flyers and pamphlets and offers and discounts all coming through. Do those things really work? They must. We'll find out how in a bit.